Hi, I'm Sam from Needcraft and today I'm going to show you how to make one of our make and paint kits from our creative kit range. So, these make and paint kits are really unique. You can personalise until your heart's content because these kits allow you to actually paint onto a fabric that's already adhered to the PVC as part of the shade. So it means you can get super creative with things like stamping, dragging, rolling, stippling, printing. There's lots and lots of creative fun to be had with these particular kits. So let's have a look and see what we get inside our kit. So these come into two different sizes, uh, the 20 centimetre or 30 centimetre in diameter. And inside of the kit, you get your rings, utility ring, which has a UK fitting. And then if you take this adapter out, it's automatically a European fitting, which is slightly wider. You also have a plain ring as well, and that will sit either at the top or the bottom of your shade. And the great thing about this kit is that you can use these shades either as pendant lights or as a table light as well. You also get your lampshade PVC, and that comes rolled up inside of your kit, but I've got one here that I just want to show you. Now this has already got a lightweight cotton, which is especially for um, the purpose of painting onto for lampshades. So it's very lightweight, it has a slight sheen, which is lovely, and it also allows the, the paint to adhere to the fabric as well. On the other side, you can see um, the inside of the shade, so it will roll like this. This is professional grade lampshade making PVC. So it's high quality, it's anti-static and anti-yellowing. It's also been tested at the Lighting Association Labs and most importantly, it's fire retardant. So it's been tested for safety as well. So this is what you'd expect to see on any lampshade on the high street. So on here, we also have very handily a precision kiss cut and the kiss cut is just scored all the way along the top and the bottom of the shade. And what that means is that later, as part of the process, we can lift the PVC away from the fabric and that leaves us with exactly the right margin. So really easy even for a beginner to lampshade making because everything's already measured out for you. So let's have a look and see what else is in the box. We also have a double-sided tape and this is a high-tack double-sided tape. So as you can see, it's really flexible, it's also transparent, and this is what we're going to use to coat our rings and pull the whole shade together. We also have our finishing tool, and this has got a sharp point, two sharp straight edges, and then a serrated edge. And we're going to use this at the end of the process just to tuck all the fabric in along the top and bottom of the shade to give that really professional uh, quality look. And as with all our Needcraft kits, we've got a full set of instructions here that take you step by step through how to paint your shade and then how to make the shade up afterwards. And there's lots of hints and tips in there as you go along, so really useful to follow as you're making up your shade. So I'll just pop that to one side. So in terms of what you actually paint your shade with, paints, you need to make sure that you use an acrylic paint or a chalk paint, something that will adhere well to textiles. Um, and there's lots of different finished results that you can get to create any shade you want. So this is really lovely if you like being creative and you just want to take some time making something that's completely unique that you really won't see anywhere else. So today I'm gonna to show you a technique which is sponging. So I'm just gonna sponge down um, my, my um, fabric on here and just show you a little bit of technique of how to use um, different pressures with the sponge to create different effects. So I'd like to use the blue um, and this is to match a room at home. So I'm just going to pop, don't need too much, just pop a little bit into a tray. And with my sponge, rather than use the whole thing because that will make it quite um, chunky, I'm just going to cut off a section like that. And what we're going to do is we're just literally going to dab this sponge into the paint. I'm just going to pull some 
to the side first, just because I want to spread that around so I've got a nice thin layer of paint. And what I'd like to do first of all is we're going to go all over the fabric. So even over the edge with the kiss cut, because we'll still be able to see that, as you can see here on the tops. So it's important that we cover everything. So I'm just going to very gently just dab the sponge on. And as soon as you get going, you'll start to feel the paint adhering onto the fabric. And as you can see, I'm just really lightly touching that at the moment. But if I want to make some darker marks, you just literally push down a little bit more force and you can do those in lines, you can go lines along. It really is up to you and it's really nice just to have a play. If you wanted to, you could have a practice on a piece of fabric first or even on a piece of paper just so you can get your eye in with a technique. And with this, something else you can do is you can layer different colours as well. So if you wanted a lighter blue, you can just simply buy a white and mix with a blue. You can mix colours together, you can overlay colours. So there's lots of things that you can do. So you can see I'm just pushing a little bit harder. And it's quite nice because you can just be as free as you want with this. So lots of different techniques are you can use brushing or stippling as well to create a more spotty, dotty effect. And also you can have a play with masking tape and you could even cut shapes out, stamping or printing. You could also use shape um, sponges so you can get just really simple children's sponges that are different shapes. Um, so that would be lovely to do if you're doing it for a child's bedroom. And if you imagine, say, the silver over the top of this or even the turquoise, it would look absolutely lovely. I'm just going to use one colour today, but you can play, which is nice and it makes it a really creative kit to use. So now the panel has completely dried, we just need to simply turn that over and we're now going to make up our shade. So the first thing we need to do is just flip back our kiss cuts and remove the PVC carefully. So just take it very gently, just literally pulling that back. And you can see there's a couple of frays there. So just nice and slowly and we can just take those frays off as we go along. And then we're just going to do exactly the same on the other side. So just simply push that back and it should crack open relatively easily. And then just carefully peel that back. And just before we finish with the panel, just snip those frays as well. We're just going to take our double-sided tape and we're just going to put this just along one of the edges. And this is where the seam's going to be. So this is where we're going to join the shade together. Just so we've taken the kiss cut away and we've just applied the tape. So we're going to move on to working with our rings. So taking the plain ring first, we just take our double-sided tape again. And as I said earlier, it's transparent. And it's transparent for a reason. And that is because as we apply it to the rings, we can then see through. And what we want to make sure is that the ring sits between the two edges of the tape. So we're just going to roll the ring round just in short bursts, just okay. And then just as we bring the two tapes together where the ends meet, I just like to snip just a tiny bit away before the ends meet. There's two reasons. One is so you can see where the tapes join. And the second is, is if you overlap them, it becomes quite difficult to peel off the backing. So it's just really to make your life easier. And then what we're going to do is fingers and thumbs. We're going to go round and push 
the tape around the ring. And the reason we're doing that is because we want the ring to be as covered with as much tape as possible. So we're just going to push down and round. So we've done one, so we're now going to do exactly the same process on the other ring. So just simply taking the ring, applying the tape, We're just going all the way around in short bursts, just making sure that the ring sits centered in between the two edges of the tape. So we're nearly there. And again, as we get to this point, simply snip that away. So just pushing the tape as far as we can to make sure it's really well adhered to the ring. So that's our two rings covered now. So now we're on to rolling up the shade and making it look more like a lampshade than it does now. So if you have on your design done a particular direction, um, you just need to think about what type of shade you want it to be at this stage. So mine is really an all over print, but I definitely want it to look more cloud like. So I would like kind of these shapes here facing up and I'm going to do this as a table lamp. So that will mean that I'll need to put this ring at the bottom because that will become the base here and this ring at the top as the open plane ring. So it's just something to bear in mind as you're making up your shade. So I'm just going to remove my utility ring backing first. Just be careful as you're lifting the red tape on the ring that you only pick up the tape and not the, uh, sorry, the backing and not the tape underneath. Um, it shouldn't come off because it is really tacky, but just in case. And then I'm just going to position that one down and I'm going to undo this one. So there we go. There's where my ends meet. Very easy to find. And I'm just going to pull the red back in away. So the tape underneath is actually clear. So we're now going to roll the rings. So with the taped end furthest away from you, we're going to start at the untaped end. And what we need to do is position the rings on the PVC. And it's not on the fabric, so something to just take a note of. On the PVC, and we're literally going to position those. And something else to just note is you'll see these spokes. What we don't want is this. We don't want a spoke to land on the seam. So make sure you're using one of the open sections in between. And once we've got both in position, we're just going to roll down and making sure they stay on track. And if they don't, just roll them back a bit. It's not a problem. Keep going and keep rolling and you can see now that I'm just using my hands at the base as well to guide it and when we get up to our seam we just simply bring it towards us so again just grabbing the red there we go and what I like to do is just bring this towards me so I know I'm getting it in just the right place that's it, just making sure that my rings are right, and they are. And then we just bring the seam together. And just very gently bring that together. So if you have one of these at home, which is a seam roller, these are excellent for just firming down that seam and making sure that that seam doesn't come open. It shouldn't, but this is just an extra little optional tool, which just means that you don't have to put any pressure on there with your hands. And what you don't want to do is push from this side because you don't want to bend um, or create a dint in the PVC. So now it's starting to look a little bit more like a lampshade. Just before we move on to the next stage, just here you'll notice where the seam is, we have um, double fabric. So we have an overlap. And what we want to do is we're just gonna simply snip in with our scissors and cut a little square of fabric away from behind and then do exactly the same on the other side and then just simply cut in and cut that away and it just means it's easier for the fabric to then tuck underneath the rings which is our final stage we're just going to turn it round to the plain end 
and all you need to do is just push the fabric down from the top and what will happen is the section underneath will just tack on to the tape meaning we're creating a really lovely tight crisp edge and just where that overlap is I'm just going to make sure that's nice and tight and it is and then do exactly the same on the other side and at this stage you can cut in with your spokes so you'll see that the fabric won't go down because of the spoke so you simply just cut in and that fabric will just sit around carry on going round and exactly the same cut in so the fabric then sits around and just on the third one now there we go it's just a little fray there I'm going to get rid of so just turning back to the plain ring because that's where we're going to start just want to show you how to tuck in so this is the finishing tool that I mentioned at the beginning of the demonstration and as I said it's got two sharp sides and a point and then a serrated edge we're going to use this to tuck the fabric underneath the frame so I like to use the point I'm just going to move that paint out of the way so I like to use the point and I always start at the seam so we're just literally going to push the fabric gently underneath you can see that that's going underneath now nice and easily we're just going to roll as we do this and then we're already back round to the seam so that's one side done and then we just need to flip over and exactly the same on the other side so just so you can see a little bit better I'll just face that towards you and I'm just going to go in around the spoke and all you need to do is just push the fabric on either side of the spoke and that should tuck under and then just carry on going round and just again round the spoke just pushing under and the other one okay and there we have it so that's our very own painted lampshades from our make and paint lampshade kit I think you'll agree it looks stunning there won't be another one like it which is great and I just want to show you how it looks on the lamp stand but also uh, some of the other effects that we've uh, put together to show you so this one and I'll just pop it upside down for now just so you can see how that glows you can see how much luminance that fabric has with the paint on and how striking that looks and how different it is some of the others that we've got so this is done with one of these rubber rollers which has a print ingrained on it you can create lots of different designs with this so we've got two with this one this one is with a lighter coat and you can see the vibrancy of the paint there so that's a lighter coat of the paint and then we have the same one here which is exactly the same roller so this is with a thick coating on this particular roller and I think you'll agree it's really strong and really vibrant and lots of depth of colour in there other things that you can do as well this is um, this is brushed and then dragged so this is with just a dry brush so a wet brush and then just dragged until it's dry so that's a nice one and then finally we have this effect which is um, painted in a, a solid colour, left to dry, and then just simply stamped. So this one will go this way up, but you could have done that all over. So there's lots of different um, effects that you can create with those. And those are just simply these little craft stamps um, and the paint put onto a sponge and then dabbed on. So you get just about the right amount and then stamped onto the plain colour. So just to show you, this was my practice sheet and some of the, the kind of effects that you can get. So here I just mixed colours, a white and a hot pink, masking tape squares, um, loads of different techniques. This was dry brushing and stippling, stripes. So you can do all sorts of things um, with the paints and the different techniques to create these fantastic, unique lampshades. 
So whether you're a creative person or not, there's lots and lots of fun to be had out of painting your own shade and making something really permanent and lovely for your home um, that nobody else will have. So I hope we've inspired you today with our make and paint kits and you go and make something for your house, your home, or maybe for a friend or relative, or even start up your own small business making these lampshades. Thank you.